I don't know. Do we want commentary? I can say some stuff. This is a preview page for the campaign for the third book, issue 02 of Majestic Comics, uh, Entropy Extropy series, the main line for Majestic, in which we're covering the main thrust of the entire comic universe, I guess. Um, we're actually looking to do some imprints this year with some friends and uh, some really cool issues and other stories going on with that. Other professionals that are making amazing work. Um, this is actually an introduction to our Earth Forces. And the page, still going to touch up a bit and fix, but um, this is Decaeus on the capital ship. Uh, getting some news and then moving on. But I'm doing really, really small details. So kind of intricate work on um, this character who I will wait to introduce until we have the proper introduction. Um, and the president who was in the last issue. But this is her going to be introduced to the Earth Defense Initiate Forces. Um, and she's going to be blown away because a secret government program that she as president was even unaware of. And so my main focus with a smaller pen is to try to keep um, small energetic lines with everything I'm doing. Trying to focus on line weight, but it gets away from me. Also, this is absolutely crummy paper. It is not um, typical drawing paper or anything like that. I actually, um, unlike the blue line that comes with the borders already, this I'm printing the actual um, page panels and everything on here. Um, so for this panel, my main focus is. Um, we hit the characters, kind of a side-by-side, -side, a little bit of a thirds layout, so he's kind of the focus, drawing into him. Um, moving in the page from here with this open panel coming off the side, I'm going to have them introduced right here, and then uh, it'll be pretty silhouetted or pretty very basic details. You won't really know um, too much beyond them just kind of being the focus. I'll move here through this. You see some of this bit here where this other character is coming this way, and then we'll have their proper introduction right here. So I'm just going to get back to the work up here. Um, for the main part on this panel, um, I'm assuming the light source is coming from above. That's why I'm hitting heavy um, where this comes in, a little heavier here, and the side of the neck is going to have a bit darker shadows. Um, this is a like underground base, so it's probably going to be like fluorescent lights and LEDs and stuff like that. So it's not really super stark lighting. Um, it's overall would just be dim, and that would be um, a little more with myself for what I'm doing um, with my density and how much dark I'm putting on there. But then also for the colors. Um, it's probably going to be really cool tones, um, so Gabriel will hopefully hit that. I haven't had a panel that he did that was disappointing, so I'm not upset, I'm not concerned at all there. Uh, if you see the this base, this was actually my initial rough, and I had them breaking the panel here. Um, that's fun to do for emphasis and really big dramatic important pieces and stuff um, like there's there's literally no panel border here it's just full bleed and then I'm actually going to use the effects of her speed trail and her blowing stuff up as the panel differentiation between them technically they could be almost in the same spot although she's about the same size here so it's not like she's actually coming out in perspective towards us where she would be small and appearing bigger um, so her actual height much smaller than uh, this character here, but um, 
power panel board here. I do have them breaking because they're going to be the focus, the main characters. Um, I would recommend not breaking up because that is kind of pulls the eyes up, but since we're shooting them off the page this way, that's not so bad. And um, that's another reason I chose to not do that on this one because I don't want to overdo the, the fancy layout design concepts and stuff like that. Um, if I had some structural elements, I could do something forcing the eye back down. So kind of curving around, so um, not hitting it super well with just the square angles. I did want to have um, the elevator that they're coming out of, since they're coming past it, kind of a frame within a frame type thing that kind of blocks out her head and um, it helps with the overlap to show perspective and it helps to kind of give a little more design sense. No, maybe that's not this. This one's not the best example of that, but that's all right. When drawing, not every panel, not every frame can be a winner. This guy, just a generic military dude in the background. Just gonna give him just some basic features. I assume he'd do some high and tight action. Give me some PTSD flashbacks from all the awful haircuts that were mandated in my time in the service. I don't want to get too detailed with him. I could block out a bit. Um, again, we're not doing like harsh daylight, but we're also not doing like super dramatic shadows for this piece. Uh, and I am absolutely guilty of just kind of freehanding and putting in whatever in the background is where, yeah. Or bites me in the butt. Alright, so he have some form of fatigues, BDUs type thing. Let's shade that out though. He, like the eye coming from above, actually that's a little too far out too. I might even digitally push this down here a little bit. Um, I was trying to give like, a, like some scope, a little bit of scale. Um, and have like computer servers here, workers working on stuff, meetings and things, more people working on stuff, computers, um, just like kind of a high-tech modern laboratory type situation here. Um, again, this is US government secret stuff that the president isn't even aware of. This is her scene in which she's learning about it. Um, this is absolutely just a fake to do some background elements. I'm going to just do like full shading here with this. And that just gets lines to curve and bring the viewer back here for this huge impact. Um, like really, really minor. So they are walking out from here and you could have them pretty much, you can see in your mind's own, you can see my finger, so my thing's about blurring out. Um, you'd see them enter this way. So if this was film, they would continue walking and then we'd cut to a close-up right here. Um, but they're moving left to right. Generally, that's where our protagonists would go. Or if we're moving the forward, story forward, there's specific reasons to move from right to left, um, either carrying the viewer through the scene or um, if we do want to show like a going against the will of the main thrust of the story. Uh, that's all storytelling complicated stuff. Um, there's work on that with like, if you watch some movies by Pixar, they, um, the like really good ones, like in Up, the characters are always moving left to right for the most part for the journey until, um, I think it's Carl. He kind of makes a mistake or he's trying to fight back and trying to go the wrong way and then they actually when he's running from the bad guys in one part he is moving right to left I hand jamming the controls here so you have to deal with me as I manipulate my pens and such um, 
guess I'll talk with my pens after I do this without messing up too much. Okay. Oh, now it's deeper than I wanted. I am absolutely by no way like a precision detail kind of guy. I am more of an energy type illustrator doing much more focus on action and uh, exaggeration. I mean, I don't get like crazy outside of proportion in general. And obviously this is a big dude, not realistic in proportions, but um, for the most part, he isn't like stretched out to be like Gumby or messed up like crazy too much, but um, you can apply action or movement with either staging, direction the character's moving, or some things like that. So this one is showing him as absolutely strong center. Um, normally you wouldn't really want someone in the center, but this is to kind of show his arrogance and defiance, and it's almost like he's staring straight at the, at the viewer with his arrogance, and then turns off because um, in this one he's actually getting communication from someone of not a higher rank necessarily, but someone that he does have to answer to. Um, okay, so the tools. This is the brush pen. Um, you see it's got the bristles. I don't know if you can see it. Try it there. Tapped on the phone with my nose. Okay. Um, have to be really delicate and really careful with my details um, since this will be a solid panel I can bleed over like this on these originals and it doesn't matter like if this was officially not gonna have any digital editing or any changes I would want to go in and white out and fix every little every little sin against the art gods where I have deviated in my life and my brush technique but in this case, I think I'm safe because I'm going to, um, a blinds, I already kept them from the rough template stage. I'm literally just gonna click the white fill button in the back there and that will be, that'll be it. Um, the lines are blue because I changed everything to blue on there because that's what I'm used to with um, traditional comic book style. Uh, doing the roughs in blue because it's uh, initially it was non photo blue, so they would just do photocopies like Xerox and it wouldn't come out um, with Photoshop. We can just select colors, so I could do that and these all I do the whole thing in fuchsia. And then when I get to scanning it in, I could just code those out and just color select them and get rid of them. I'm not going to do this one while I'm uh, recording because I can't hold the phone and do everything because I it's it's just too hard. I, I'm not good enough as well. Um, I'm going to do some of the elements on this. Um, still have my three, so that's my finest. That's about the finest I'll go. Um, like good artists who do more of like the really really fine line details. Um, they'll do like the 0.01s and 0.001s. I, I just feel like I'm going to break those things just with the sheer weight of pressure. Even my lightest, like this is about as light as I'll press to get the tiniest, tiniest little lines. And I still feel like I'm not being delicate enough. I'm not sure I'm actually showing what I'm doing here. This guy, I usually don't do super, super jacked characters. I really don't think most superheroes, based off of athletics, would be like Arnold Schwarzenegger style bodybuilders and stuff. Um, the really strength based characters that are absurdly huge and like, like abnormally ab non human in size, yeah, that works. Um, 
I'll do them like Joe Madreira type. Huge muscular chonky chonky bits like you can feel the ball that the shoulder is here. You can feel some of the, the depth there and like how it's kind of bulging out here would be like the highlight area. Um, same with like the tricep. I think I got more into like martial arts movies and in general like my protagonists are usually not the huge jacked 80s superhero type like I yeah like it's not like Jackie Chan or Jet Li and it's more someone like Salt Snake where it's like just real body and uh, their style is more like skill based um, especially like the Jackie Chan Jet Li style of just fast and technique over everything else I don't think uh, Flash should be, I mean, he needs a lot of calories, but he doesn't need to be Ronnie Coleman for his, uh, his power set. I think Batman would be more of a endurance athlete, I like that they went for like a, um, the Matt Reeves, is it Matt? The, the latest movies, the Pattinson version. They were like, okay, we want him to work on speed. And that was his, his main focus for his suit, is speed and force. There's a, I don't know if it's a Vsauce or like a science of superheroes that was talking about. Um, if you really got hit by Superman with his most powerful hit, it's not the fact that he's very strong. Like, that keeps him from getting hurt and being able to give the damage, but it is mostly him and the speed that he's hitting you with, the mass, it's the force that he's able to hit you with is because he's moving your light speed, so his punches are like an atom smasher kind of thing. So, speaking of smashing, um, this one I am, you can see his force is mostly leaning in with this, um, I'm trying to barrel out the rib cage. Can't quite see it, but that is there, and he's folded over on himself, so it's not quite um, as prominent as when he's here, and his rib cage would be <laughs> out here, like a big trunk type thing. Um, but it's folding in, putting the force in through this area here. And looking at it now, I probably, like every, every single thing I'll draw, I'll be like, oh, I should have done that, I should have done that, but it is what it is. So, um, I kind of arced it down a little more here, which almost loses a little bit of the force if it had gone straight or something like that. It probably would have been a little more impactful, but that's just the realities of <coughs> doing the art. So. Muscles connected, so left arm is up, that means the pec is going to tighten, whereas the right one is going to be more of the, the W, whereas this side is going to be way higher because the shoulder's up, it pulls on that muscle there. this hand way too big in the blue. Noticed in the last video, which I did at speed, so you really can't tell, um, but I had, um, had some, I had a little bit less tight pencils, like I didn't have these guys' face, like the, the, that's about as tight as I'll go for pencils if I'm gonna ink it myself. Um, the last piece I did, the cover that I, I put on uh, YouTube as well, which is the, should be the previous video to this, or it's a short or whatever. Um, the, uh, the roughs I did, I 
absolutely was just laughing to myself. Not out loud, like a weirdo, but eh, maybe a little. You can't tell it's sped up, there's no audio. Um, I found out that I really was not following a lot. I just did it right there, just like thinking of the example. So, the initial roughs. Okay, look here, this is like the head of him for the initial rough, his shoulder, kind of that kind of thing. She was fully separate, but I have her overlapping now to have her kind of a little more in front, which I'll need to position her. I'll need to tilt her a little bit. Um, so the each stage is an iteration, and that's a couple of my videos. I've been like, like rough stages, iteration, and then it's the first iteration, and then each step is like a whole layer on top of that. But it's it's more of like refining and changing. Like it's not so much as just doing the rough draft and then going over it with more marks. It's it really is altering it and adjusting it, like, as you're feeling it, you're not even, I don't know, I guess a lot of people think, or they think that, oh, okay, you see it in your mind and all that, I just saw, there's this test, it was like, kind of a aphasia or euphoria or something, where it was like, people seeing images in their brains, and a lot of artists were saying that they're like, really high, like, they see super, super detail, or even people that aren't artists, saying they see sorry, <laughs> super, super detailed um, images of what they have or what they expect in their mind. And I, I can picture something like say, um, like a Labrador dog. I can picture, like you picture your lab right now in your brain. Like, don't know, do you have it like photorealistic? Or is it an actual photo that you've seen of a lab before or is it kind of like, this is a dog, it's maybe black or golden or whatever, like there's all the different types. Um, I'm definitely one of the more rough stage, like maybe barely outlines, barely an initial form or something like that. I think that helps keep it fresh for me every level and every layer I do. I turn the page so I can pull down, I'm stronger maybe? I'm more consistent and uh, maybe a little less crappy. See this chunk right here from his forearm to his knuckles, that's way too thick, but I already kind of messed it up, so I'll just cover it and hide it in shadow and <laughs> Landon Gray won't know unless they see this video and make it 25 minutes into this video here, haha. <laughs> Just a little bit. Um, I have a reference for her outfit. That will get a little bit started. So her being a pretty lady, I want to make sure not to have too much, too much heavy line work. If I can shore it up cleanly and discreetly. That's the plan. So she has super curly hair, but she's also going to be doing the speedster thing, so I'm gonna have it all trailing and whipping out behind her. Uh, one thing I was gonna say before, um, I sometimes won't almost finish the line because the line break, that's where the light source is coming in, just like before how it's kind of upper left, still doing upper left, that's kind of just generic, basic, unless there is a fixed or specific purpose for a light source. Um, you can have it right, left, whatever. I mean, if you really want to think about it, like light's going to be coming down, it's going to be coating them, 
they're gonna be casting their own shadow. Every single thing that the light's gonna bounce up and hit them. That's why you get like rim lights and stuff. Um, which would be kind of like on this edge here underneath. That's actually where what that's implying right here is that there's light bouncing up below him. Um, that's why this would not go all the way down. You could just block it out, but that's not doesn't need to go all the way. So um, but the thickness, that's where I was going with that one. Um, the thickness of the lines really thick down here and I'd go really thick down here because the light again coming up from here it's going to be um, the thicker line is going to be reading as if it's heavier and that's where it's catching um, all the shadows and the thinner line on top is where the light would be Another thing, you can see this almost a straight line of action here. Again, it would have been even stronger if it was straight, straight out, but I have them kind of curling down on the bottom, which I will regret for all eternity. I'm sure I do some of this, so like for pencil work. This looks a lot heavier here, but that's just because I was trying to find the line. Whereas when I actually get to this, like this is gonna be really heavy. Inside here will be really like blacked out. Heavy bottom, really light on top. Really light on top, heavy, heavy, heavy. Uh, heavy lines here as well. Just really thick, chunky strokes. <clears throat> get a little bit back to this and then we'll wrap this one up because Ain't nobody want to draw, watch me draw for 30 something minutes. Not yet. No, I did not plan to do anything like that. I'm just feeling it as I go. And yeah, you can see there's literally no, no form or structure here. It's just, it's something. And then gonna put in denseness down here a little lighter up there I went a little heavier than I probably could have shit on a couple of those here there you go now it's fixed now nobody knows don't tell but that's how I literally go through everything when it comes to the artwork and just mess with it and if you uh, pile on your mistakes enough you'll eventually hide your mistakes and then have to take no, no responsibility for them. So that's drawing tips number three. If you look, I have her arm coming down here. I do have him overlapping here where her hand is. Didn't really want that, but if I pull it straight out, I could probably Work it out. Here's her other arm, which I don't hate where it is right now. See her shoulder, this shoulder here. And then if you try to see through the form, we have a rib cage, which will go back up to here. That's her right lat way over there. And then we see her shoulders about right here. Her upper arm's right here and it forms way too far out. So I will change a little bit and then this is gonna be her hand now. And I don't recommend that if you are just learning to draw to do these wild fixes. Oh, it's a bit too big too. Cause I wasn't planning. There we go. We'll fix it in post-production. If I remember. So you can do uh, notes on the side there, fix the skulls. See this? You wouldn't notice before, but uh, if you look at it, the size of these two, this one's way long and way bigger, way different. I messed the forehead up and all that, so that's something that I already inked and I'll have to fix digitally, but I won't tell anybody about it. That'll be our little secret, okay?
Okay, probably going to go ahead and not just blast through that with the ink right now, just because I'm afraid of it. Um, I will get the blue out and do a blue version with the actual blue pencil, and then, yeah, let's do it right now. I'll do it right now, that'll be the wrap up for this. So, this one's right here, I'm gonna pull it back up here, so it is more straight out. She has kind of this flying V type thing. So this is gonna come here, that's the bottom edge. You can see that right now, you can see it better than I can in real life. All right. And then pull her hand out like that. It's about the thumb. We'll come about right there. And then the fingers will trail back because of the amazing speed. So this is kind of the leading edge here. I also had kind of worked it back a little bit before. If I could, I'd make it a little straighter. Um, the tension's here, so the tricep is bulged. Her arm is straight out, uh, so the bicep isn't gonna be as curled as it would be if it was bent, like this guy right here. Uh, and then, <clears throat> kind of the leading edge of the force is coming this way, boom. Index finger, put these two out, and we'll put them together, just kind of create some shapes, you know? Fingers are weird, so she's kind of back like that. So maybe I'll, since feeling that, I'll bring her middle finger up a little more, because that's kind of just where mine was naturally going. And since the front is here, almost overlapping, and that's fine. So, let's get some ink on that. And this is just the shape. She's gonna have like, pardon me for talking with my mouth full. Um, she's gonna have elements to her suit as well, but for the most part, that part's mostly more like skin tight. Um, I imply the bend the meat of the fist or of the hand see that here and then the knuckle and then the front um, knuckly bit this bit right here I'm kind of not even gonna worry about on this one I'm just gonna have the meat of the thumb the pad and go back <clears throat> that was a little further than I wanted because the paper was weak and pulled me into it so it's pushing really hard. There you go, ownership. I pushed too hard, that's why. It wasn't the paper's fault. Right, these looking a little chunky because I just looked at my fingers and I have thick bitties. Okay, get that. Okay. So, that's uh, some thoughts on inking. I'm gonna keep working it. Have a great day.